Good morning. Good morning. If I could have the children come forward, that would be terrific. I think I'm going to take after his footwear. <laughs> Good morning. How are you? Good. School's all over? Yes. You're out for the summer? Yes. All those kind of things? Yes. And today's a special day. Yeah, it's Father's Day, right? So tell me, what do you call your father? Do you have a special name for your father? Do you call him father? You call him he hugs you and kisses you. Well, that's wonderful. I'm glad to hear that. Well, what do you call him? Do you call him daddy? Yeah. Yeah. I call him my mommy mom. Yeah, you call your mommy mom. That's good. That's good. Mommy. mommy. And daddy, you call daddy. You know what daddy is? It's a wonderful term, a word of affection. Jesus tells us that we have the opportunity to call our Heavenly Father, Daddy, as well. He says, when you pray, say, Abba, Father, Daddy, is what Abba means. It's a very good phrase to use. Sometimes we, when we get older, we shorten the, the word Daddy to become Dad. And we just call them Dad. Sometimes, maybe in some cultures, we call our Father, Pop. And so we say, okay, Pop, let's go out and throw a baseball for a while, or something of the sort. Yeah, it sounds funny to us. Dads are very special to us. They love us, and they care for us, and they nurture us, and they help us to grow. Sometimes they have to discipline us. That's not fun. It's not fun for Dad to do that either. Sometimes they have to just take us in our arms, in their arms, and say, it's going to be okay. Did you like the little video that we saw at the beginning there? I got this. Yeah, that was kind of cute, especially how it ended, wasn't it? When uh, Grandpa wanted to give the baby back to Mom, and she held out the diaper and said, you got this. <laughs> there are some tasks that we do as Dad that we love doing, and there are some tasks that we do as Dad that we don't really love doing, but they're important for us to do anyhow. And so today we set aside a day, the third Sunday in June always, is Father's Day. And we do something special with our dads on that day. We celebrate with them, maybe we give them a card, maybe you've made something uh, to give them. You just spend a little time, a special kind of a day, with our dads on Father's Day. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for dads today. For earthly dads who guide us and give us direction and give us uh, all the things that we need. And we're especially thankful for our Heavenly Father today who gives us everything that we need as well. We ask, O oh Lord, your blessing to be upon the children this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're off to the races. <laughs> now since you already looked it up it'll be quicker we're in mark chapter 4 and we're going to be reading verses 26 through 34. mark chapter 4 <clears throat> and beginning with verse 26 and reading through verse 34. jesus said this is what the kingdom of god is like a man scatters seed on the ground night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up. The seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain. First the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it, because the harvest has come. Again he said, what shall we say the kingdom of God is like, or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest seed you plant in the ground. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants, with such big branches that the birds of the air can perch in its shade. 
With many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable, but when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything. And then turning back to the book of Romans, the last chapter in the book of Romans, the 16th chapter, and reading there verses 17 through 19. Romans chapter 16 and reading beginning with verse 17. <clears throat> I urge you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause division and put obstacles in your way that are contrary to the teaching you have learned. Keep away from them. For such people are not serving our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own appetites. By smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the minds of naive people. Everyone has heard about your obedience, so I am full of joy over you, but I want you to be wise about what is good and innocent about what is evil. May God's blessing be added to the reading and the hearing of his word. Happy Father's Day to all the dads here today. We are grateful that you have chosen to spend some time in the Lord's house, in our Father's house, and uh, worshiping today, and we ask God's blessing to be upon you. What our society needs are godly fathers and mothers today. We are perhaps more desperate for that need today than at any time in our nation's history. Um, today we have a more literate society than we've ever had before. More people know how to read and write. And we have a more biblically illiterate society than any time in our nation's history. At one time in our nation's history, a politician was going to give a speech. He could reference a story from scripture with full understanding that everybody who was hearing him would know that story in scripture. Today in the church, we cannot even do that, let alone to do that in the American political scene of today. We have a problem with biblical literacy today. We have a problem with parents being parents today, men and women, both sides of that equation. And so uh, being a godly mother or godly father is a rich heritage, and we salute you who are striving to do that, and we are grateful for that to happen. I've told you before some of the stories of my attempts at gardening. And gardening and farming, I know, are two different things. They are somewhat related, but they are dramatically different. Uh, I was going to check with Todd today that when he sows seeds in his field, let's say he's sowing corn, I think I remember him telling me before there are 80,000 kernels in a, in a bushel. Is that correct? Is that the right number? Okay, he's nodding his head. Uh, and he was nodding it this way, not this way. Okay. So 80,000 seeds get put into the ground, and he expects to harvest 80,000 little pieces of corn. No, he doesn't. He expects to harvest a whole lot more than that. I think today the expectation is 200 plus bushels per acre is what he's expecting to harvest. So you put one little seed in and it grows this big corn stalk and sometimes they have one ear and sometimes they have two ears on them and each of those ears has multiple numbers of kernels of corn on them. We expect our harvest to multiply. And so dads, I want to think about, I want you to think about what are the kinds of things that you're sowing into the lives of your children today? What words are you sharing with them that are good and encouraging and that will produce a harvest in their life? Because the other side of that is what we read about there in Romans chapter 16, the, the seeds of discord that are sometimes sown as well. I have never ever known a farmer who has sown weeds among his seeds or her seeds. Weeds simply seem to come, don't they? I had someone criticize me quite a number of years ago because I had weeds in my garden. And I said, doesn't everybody? And they said, well, you're a Christian. You should have no weeds in your garden. In the Garden of Eden, there was no weeds. Well, guess what? 
We don't live in the Garden of Eden anymore, and sin has permeated into this world, and I've never planted any of those thistle seeds, I've never planted any of those uh, uh, other kinds of weeds that grow up. In fact, uh, every farmer that I know uses something on their crops to prevent those weeds from emerging, some kind of Roundup product or whatever it might be that they're using to keep weeds at bay. Or they go and they, they, uh, they till, you know, until the corn gets too tall or whatever, and they can't do that anymore. And uh, they, they use whatever they, means they can to keep the weeds at bay. I want you to understand that we sow seeds into the lives of our children all of the time. We sow seeds of encouragement and strengthening into their lives. When we come alongside them and we encourage them, we give them good praise for the things that they're doing. We help them to see with a constructive way the mistakes that they have made as well. It is equally important to learn from our mistakes as it is from our success. In fact, some would say that it's more important that you learn from your mistakes than from your success as well. A friend of mine who was a pastor, he's now going home to be with the Lord, was driving his car heading to one of the state hospitals years ago. We don't have state hospitals that operate for the mentally insane or the criminally insane, but there was a gentleman at the hospital, this was a number of years back, probably in the late 60s, early 70s when this happened, and he knew a shortcut that he could take to go to this hospital. It was Wernersville State Hospital, if you know where that is. And he was taking on this dirt road, and he's running along the hospital grounds. And of course, they have a, a big fence with you know barbed bar wire on the top and all that sort of thing. And my friend's car, the 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 front wheel came off, and of course it dropped down. You know, as the wheel continued rolling another quarter of a mile down the road. And so he got the car to a stop, and he got out and he looked, and his spare tire was flat. So he couldn't put his spare tire on, and so he gets down and he retrieves his other tire, and he brings it back, and the tire's still in good shape. It still has air in it, still is holding pressure, all those kind of things. He can jack his car up, and then it may lock nuts. How's he going to get this wheel to stay on? So there's a guy on the inside, a person who's at the hospital, and says to him, take one lug nut from each of the other three wheels, and put it on this one, and it will at least get you to the next gas station where you can buy new lug nuts. Well, the answer was brilliant. And so my friend turns around and says, thank you, I, I don't know if I'd ever thought about that. And the guy said, I may be crazy, but I'm not stupid. <laughs> Sometimes we learn and we teach our children in very appropriate and sometimes in inappropriate ways. We can be a bad example to our children as well. And they will be sure to report us, by the way, whenever we've, we've done those kinds of things. So Jesus uses parables to teach us. And here we have, this morning, we have two parables. One is the parable of the weeds and or the seeds and how they produce and what happens. And no one quite understands that whole process. You put that seed of corn in the ground and something happens. Well, I can tell you today what, it ha what happens. That seed dies and it bears new fruit. It's the principle of death and resurrection in that seed. It dies and bears new fruit, and up through the ground comes that little tiny plant that we call corn. And it continues to grow and continues to grow and continues to grow, and, and you know, now it's getting pretty high. It doesn't have any uh, ears on it yet, but it continues to grow and it continues to grow until it finally develops ears, and then it's finally ready to harvest. And we take that, those ears of corn and we eat them on our table or we use them for animal feed or whatever its purpose is. And we don't quite understand how that whole process happens, but we know it's based upon God's divine design. And it's an important process for us to happen. And then Jesus tells them the second parable. And the second parable is one that has intrigued me. He says to them, consider the mustard seed. It is the smallest among all the seeds that you plant in the garden. Now some people have criticized Jesus because one of the other translators, or one of the other gospels, says it is the smallest of all seeds. 
And you know, to that audience, it was the smallest of all seeds. It's not technically the smallest of all seeds, but Mark says it's the smallest of the seeds that we plant in our garden, and he is right about that. So you consider that mustard seed. I did a little research on mustard seed, and I was amazed to find this out. The average mustard seed is one three hundredths of an inch in length. So if you could line them up on a piece of paper, 300 mustard seeds side by side by side, they would be one inch long. That's pretty small. And from that small, tiny little mustard seed grows what? A plant that's so high that the birds can build a nest in it. It's a shrub, if you will, a bush, if you will. And it grows up very high, you harvest the mustard, birds of the air can build nests in it and do all of those kinds of things. And so dads, I want you to understand that we all sow seeds, every one of us. We sow seeds. And it's not just dads, it's moms as well, and it's people who've not had children. It's all of us sow seeds with our life. And are we sowing good seed or weed seed? What is it we are sowing into the lives of our children? What is it that we are helping them to learn and understand? I have wonderful memories of a dad and a mom who loved and encouraged me, who disciplined me, perhaps not as often as I should have been, but more often than I thought I should, just like some of you, and uh, they cared about me. They weren't perfect people, but they loved me. And they loved me in, the, in spite of the fact that I wasn't perfect either. And they invested time in me, time in my life. I've told people many times I could probably cast a rod before I could walk. And that may be a bit of an exaggeration, but it's not much of an exaggeration. My dad took my brothers and I fishing on a routine basis. And my brothers and I still fish to this day because dad invested time with us and showed us how to bait a hook, showed us how to tie a, an improved cinch knot, and showed us how to do all of those kinds of things. And maybe fishing's not your deal, but maybe something is your deal that you have spent time with your children or will spend time with your children and so on. Quite a number of years ago, the school principal called me to talk about a child in the church. And the school principal said, we're having a lot of problems with such and so. And I said, not surprising. We have our share of them, and we only have them for two hours on Sunday, you know, for the Sunday school and for the worship time. And he says, well, pity us. We have him for six hours a day, five days a week. And here's what I'd like to suggest to you. And I said, okay. He said, what this child needs is a good example of a man to be in his life because this boy has no father he does obviously but he has no father that he knows of and there's not a positive male role model in his life do you have someone in your congregation who would be willing to invest a few hours a week into the life of this child to show them a positive example of being an adult male and I said to the school principal yes there is and I'll get back to you. I will find somebody and I will get back to you uh, with that information to let you know what's going to be happening in the life of this child. Isn't it amazing that our society sees the problem but doesn't always see the solution? And our church is the solution for that. The church needs to be intimately involved in the lives of our children, of our community, of our congregation, uh, of our area. I love Vacation Bible School because we see all the kids who we normally see on a Sunday morning or throughout the year, but we always have a few that we see them only at Vacation Bible School time. And you know what? That's a precious privilege of that we have been given to invest into the lives of those children for a couple of hours, five nights in a week. Can we make a difference in that amount of time? You bet we can. The positive influence 
of somebody into the life of these children, men and women who do that. You know what? We plant the seeds. We don't know how it grows. We don't know how it germinates. We don't know any of those things. The Apostle Paul said that he has planted, Apollos has watered, and God gives the increase. And so I want to encourage all the dads and moms and everybody here today to be a positive influence into the life of children when you can. Encourage them, love them, appreciate them, do all of those kinds of things uh, for them and with them as often as you can. There's no greater joy for me than when I call the children up on the platform here and am able to spend a few minutes just having a little dialogue with them about what do you call dad or whatever it might be. And you need to understand that I have no idea how this is going to end when I bring those children up here. I have an idea of how I'm going to start. Uh, I, and I've seen that happen in the lives of others. I'm looking back there and seeing Robin. Remember when she gave those children that little container with uh, some money in it? <laughs> All throughout the service, ding, 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 ding. And she, as soon as she did it, she knew it was wrong. But it was okay. It was a valuable lesson. And we all learned by it, especially the children did that day. We're not always going to be perfect in everything that we do. We need to spend time with our children, children of the church, children of the community, and all of those kinds of things. Many, many, many years ago, I got a call from a funeral director. I was pastoring the Sudbury Church of God up in Schuylkill County. Clark Snyder called me and he said, Pastor, I have a funeral for you. And I generally always say, is it a person from the church or a person from the community? And he said, it's neither. But it's someone who wants the pastor of the Sudbury Church of God to do their funeral service. And I said, okay. He said, are you coming into town? And I said, sure, I'll come in and stop by. It was the middle of the winter, it's February. I went in and he said, here's the story. And I'll give you just a thumbnail sketch. This man was 98 years old and had passed away. He had grown up in the Pine Grove area, graduated from high school when he was 18, and left the community. Went off to college, went on to graduate school, and became a big wig in the pharmaceutical industry. Lived in New Jersey. His parents had died. He had no brothers and sisters. He had no living aunts and uncles. He had no cousins. None of those kinds of things. But the man had planned his funeral service. He had picked the hymns. He had picked the scriptures. He had done everything. And he had this all prearranged and planned out. And he gave it to Mr. Snyder because he wanted to be buried in the Sudberg Church of God Cemetery because it was in the Sudberg Church of God in a program called The Lord's Army that he had accepted Jesus as his Savior and Lord. And he remembered it and lived his faith all of those years. So, Clark gives me all this stuff. Come the day of his service, it's a, 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 you know, like a 10 o'clock viewing and an 11 o'clock service. It's snowing sideways. It's ugly and cold and sleep mixed in with the snow. Come 10 o'clock, no one comes to, for the viewing. Come 11 o'clock, it's now time to do the service. No one is there. It's me and the funeral people. And so I said, Clark, what do you think we ought to do? And he said, it's entirely up to you, Reverend. And I said, well, you know what? This guy wanted all of this stuff. He wanted these songs sung, and he wanted these scriptures. We're going to do this. And he said, good. So I'm sure it was probably a terrible rendition with Clark and Digger and myself singing and Clark's wife Mary playing the organ. And we sang, you know, Amazing Grace and How Great Thou Art, or whatever it was, I don't remember what songs were. I read the scriptures, I did a sermon, I talked a little bit about this guy, didn't know him, but talked about the scriptures and the hope that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. We conclude the service, load the body into the, to the, uh, curse. curse, that's it, that's the thing, that thing. <laughs> Went to the cemetery, we didn't spend a lot of time in the cemetery, all of those kind of things, and... You know, on the way back, Clark hands me an envelope, and I put it on the inside of my jacket pocket. He said, I'd like you to open that now. And I said, oh, Clark, I'm going to open it when I get home. Because 
for me, that kind of money was always kind of just like found money. You know, it wasn't that you were depending upon that money. We'd use it in some special way in our family, you know, to do something with it, set it aside for vacation or whatever. And he said, no, I'd like you to open it now. Now, back in the day, I was getting 25 hours to do a funeral, 35 hours occasionally to do a funeral. So I opened this envelope up and I, I pulled the check out, $750. And I said, Clark, you've obviously made a mistake on this check. And he said, no, I haven't. That's why I wanted you to open it now. This is what this man wanted for the pastor of the Studenberg Church of God. And I said, sure, I'm glad we sang all those hymns <laughs> and read all those scriptures. <coughs> And you know, that man, even though I never knew him, had blessed my family and me in that process. Because we were able to go on vacation that year and had money to be able to do that, and some of those kinds of things that wouldn't have happened perhaps otherwise. We sow seeds. And sometimes we have the benefit of seeing the result. I'm sure when Todd has finished planning, and I think I heard him say he's not quite finished all of his planning yet, and when he's finished planning, that's not the end of the story, is it? No, the end of the story is finally when the harvest comes. And I've never known any farmer who plants just for the sake of planting. They all plant for the sake of the harvest. And when harvest time, there is no greater joy than bringing in the harvest. And so when we invest our lives into the lives of other people, and we see them develop a life of faith, and we encourage them and nurture them and walk alongside them, there is no greater joy for us than to see the harvest happen. We all sow seeds. What kind of seeds do we sow? Heavenly Father, we thank you this day for who you are and for the fact that many people have invested into our lives. We ask now this day, O oh Lord, that you would help us to invest into the lives of others, adults, and certainly children as well. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.